And good afternoon, everybody. We're live here from Wikibon World Headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts. I'm Jeff Kelly, Wikibon's lead big data analyst. Uh, we're here to talk to, with uh, Win Disco, an uh, interesting company um, out of Silicon Valley uh, and uh, the UK. Uh, we're here with CEO David Richards. Hi, Jeff. Nice, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. And uh, we've got uh, Jagain Sundar as well, CTO, uh, VP of Engineering. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming on the Thanks, Cube Jeff. here at uh, here at Wikibon headquarters. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Wendisco and how you guys kind of came together. Um, Jen Gary, you, you were previously with Altus, uh, Altusoft, so tell us a little bit, uh, uh, Altusstore, excuse me, tell us, tell us a little bit how you guys came together. So uh, Jeff, um, Altusstore was founded by myself and Konstantin Shrachko, and we were building this big data storage appliance. Um, it's very hot space, we got founded maybe in January of last year. We were in constant conversations with various companies that wanted to buy us. We were in advanced negotiations with a VC firm to take an investment money. Then we met David. And um, probably in the first, within the first 15 minutes of our meeting us, uh, David took us to meet with Alad, chief scientist of Van Disco, who's invented this very, active, in, very interesting active-active replication technology. So both Constantine and I have looked at various ways to remove the single point of failure problem in the name node over the last few years. We're intimately familiar with the avatar node, the backup node, the secondary name node. The consensus, the, the, the consensus we came to was that none of the solutions are really adequate or do what they're supposed to do. Um, within an hour of meeting with Alad, we recognized the value of Vandisco's active-active replication. And I knew that we could enter the market with a value-added distribution that was truly the only and first active-active replicated name node solution. Um, we walked away from the VC firms, we walked away from the Fortune 100 firms that were trying to buy us, and um, we agreed to be bought by Vandisco in, in, instead, which, which I still think is, 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 is the best decision we made. Mm -hmm. So David, tell us from your perspective, well, what to kind of uh, drew you uh, to Jagain and his team, and, and maybe give us a little bit of context, um, kind of where you fit into this big data world and, and how you see uh, your technology as a, as a good fit. So uh, Wandisco was uh, founded in 2005. Uh, it stands for Wide Area Network Distributed Computing. It sounds like we're into discos and 1970s <laughs> pop and doing all this sort of stuff. Actually, we're not. Uh, they, our heritage is in distributed computing. And uh, we floated the company on the London Stock Exchange uh, in June. It was a hugely successful IPO, continues to be a hugely successful IPO. And as part of that, we promised our shareholders that we believed that we could take our unique, now patented, active-active replication technology and apply it to additional new markets, and one of those markets that we'd identified was the very exciting, very fast-growing, very important big data marketplace. And uh, we went into the market and we looked for uh, unique experience, unique expertise, specifically in the Apache Hadoop space. And uh, Dr. Konstantin Shavko is credited with uh, the maintenance and creation of HDFS. He's the inventor of the name node. He was in that uh, party of six at Yahoo uh, way back when that first invented and conceived the idea of Hadoop and as Jagain said uh, when we first met it was it was love at first sight uh, <laughs> to coin a phrase um, but we knew immediately um, that this was the right company for us to acquire it all happened very quickly both sides came together uh, the teams have been working together now for a number of months and we're excited actually to, to we'll be announcing new products in February which is really fast um, speed to be going at and you know this marketplace things are changing so quickly so it's very important for Wandisco to be able to get products into the market as quickly as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. So you know we've been covering this market for a while and of course there's some of the, the more well-known names in, in this market the Cloudera's and the Hortonworks and MapR's of the world so uh, tell us uh, tell our, our community specifically really what is the value differentiation here what do you bring to the big data space that some of the other providers aren't aren't uh, offering up at this point. Um, and I mean, it sounds from, from my perspective, it sounds like really the, the key is enterprise readiness. And, and talk a little bit about that. So at, at the very highest level, uh, we can take our secret source, which is this patented active-active replication algorithm, and apply it to Hadoop to make it bulletproof 
for enterprise deployments. That means specifically that we have something coming out called the non-stop name node uh, that I'll let Jagain explain in some more detail what exactly what that is. But that will ensure that Hadoop stays up 100% of the time, guaranteed, cross data centers, replication, things that enterprises need. The second thing that we're going to offer is an S3 enabled uh, uh, Hadoop appliance, that's a software appliance, that de-risks your third party deployments into the Amazon cloud, where you, we allow you to take it from the Amazon cloud to behind your own firewall. So those are the two really big value added components. I don't really see us competing necessarily with Cloudera and Hortonworks. We will have our own uh, Wandisco distribution that we hope customers will use. But equally, we're, we will work with uh, CDH and Hortonworks in equal measure. So if you've already made a decision to use Cloudera or Hortonworks, but you want our unique active active replication technology, you want bulletproof availability, then you can use us in conjunction with those distributions. Yeah, tell us about Thanks, that. Jeff. Thanks, yeah, the, David. Uh, so let me talk about the nonstop name node first. Uh, so this is the industry's first and only active, active name node replication solution. By that, I mean any of the name nodes can service reads and writes. So there's true load balancing, and if you have to do some planned maintenance, if you need to update Linux libraries on one of the name nodes, you bring that name node down, up install your patch, your RPM, or your .deb, bring it back up, and it'll catch up and be back in service. There's no downtime at all. That alone, I think, brings a lot of value to this equation. We also guarantee that applications that run on top of our nonstop name nodes, such as HBase, will continue to run uninterrupted. Applications that you run on top of HBase will not even know of the existence of multiple name nodes or that one went down or came back. This is truly the only active, active solution out there. All the other ones out there are passive standby, hot standby, cold standby. All of them take time to come back up and start providing service. There's no load balancing with any of these solutions. HBase is very fragile when, it com when, it, when it's run on top of some of these solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's a clear advantage. The second big point that, as uh, David already mentioned, we have Amazon S3 API compatibility built into our product suite. So if you've got your storage in Amazon S3 and you're using Elastic MapReduce to run jobs there, you can move those jobs to your Hadoop provided by us with no change to code at all. It's an operations procedure where they point the application at your in-house Hadoop with S3 compatibility and you'll be up and running with no programmer work at all. Mm -hmm. Those are the two significant advantages we bring. So let's dig into that second one for, for a moment. So tell us what you're seeing in terms of uh, desire for that kind of capability. The, the idea that uh, you're seeing enterprises deploy in Amazon's cloud uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, it's quick to get get up and running. Uh, in a test testing environment, it's uh, really fairly affordable. I mean, that's certainly uh, the elastic nature of the, of the cloud as well. So um, why are you seeing, or why do you think there's a market there to, for um, kind of bringing those back in-house into a private cloud? So um, there are various considerations, cost, privacy, confidentiality, availability, and different enterprises place different values on each of those. But let's talk about each of those. Cost, it's very easy to get Amazon storage and compute at 18 cents an hour or 10 cents an hour or 11 cents an hour, but your monthly bill can easily run into hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're doing any serious work. We recently spoke to a potential customer who's got a multi-million dollar Amazon bill, and their desire to get out of that system is very high. There are various enterprises that have very confidential information that they will never put on a network outside of theirs. They still want the development flexibility, the scripting capabilities, the API capabilities, and the modern cloud-like elasticity that Amazon brings, except they want it in their own data center. We have the exact solution for that sort of a problem. There's a lot of work happening to take uh, um, the, the value that we see in being able to provide programming ability or the ability to convert a data center into a programmable resource is very high. People will uh, find that more cost effective and uh, um, more valuable to run in their own data center. Mm -hmm. um, so let's kind of shift back to uh, the, the, the name node and, and the idea that you guarantee basically uh, availability for your 
for your HBase and the applications running on top of your HBase deployment. Um, David, so, so what translate that into uh, really the business value? What does that allow companies to do now that they have that capability? Well, as, um, as Hadoop moves from sentiment analysis batch-based pro programs to real-time runtime, enterprise runtime uh, programs, it, it changes the dynamic. And even an outage planned or unplanned, and by the way, there are a hell of a lot of planned outages, as Gian will tell you from his time at Yahoo, um, but they're still outages. So actually having complete availability of Hadoop becomes not just a nice to have, it becomes a must have, a mission critical must have. So how much did that outage on New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve at Netflix cost them, I wonder? R probably runs into tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. So if you multiply that out across all the enterprises in the United States that are currently deploying Hadoop, it becomes unacceptable. So we think that high availability, and particularly name node high availability, which is a known single point of failure in Hadoop today, we solve that problem not just eloquently, but it's the only active-active replication solution over a wide area network to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you, you're onto something there with the, one of the things that I think is holding back Hadoop uh, from kind of really production level, uh, mission critical, supporting mission critical critical applications, of course, is, is the uh, the ability to, to guarantee really that, it, that those applications are up and running at all times. Um, you know, companies are paying a lot of money to the oracles of the world to, to, to do that. Um, you know, if the, and the idea I think of big data is to move to a, a more affordable and uh, flexible way of doing that, and uh, that sounds like exactly the kind of the sweet spot you're trying to hit here. Exactly, it's resiliency in the enterprise isn't it, it, it's 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 a must-have product. So you know, I, we're very excited when this product comes out in uh, late February, uh, certainly in Q1. Um, we'll see what the uptake's going to be like, but um, we're already seeing a lot of early demand for this. Fantastic. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at theCUBE, uh, live uh, from uh, Wikibon World Headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts. We appreciate it. Uh, Wendisco, uh, David, Jagger, thank you. thanks again. We'll, hope, uh, we'll see you again, uh, hopefully, at the uh, Strata Conference. Absolutely. Uh, and here uh, in our studios, or uh, perhaps in our studios in the, on the uh, West Coast. So thanks, everybody, for watching today. Um, check out Wendisco. Very interesting story. Uh, and we hope to see you again here soon. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Jeff.